This indicates that she does not judge quickly by outer facts or appearances, but also intuitively and psychically senses what is right and just. In her hand, she holds a balance scale in order to wisely judge what is required to bring a condition into proper balance and harmony. I invite you to envision yourself as a balance scale. Visualize a vertical pole of light that runs from the base of your spine through the top of your head, a column of light. Now visualize a horizontal pole running through your, the temples of your head, intersecting behind your third eye in the pituitary gland. Here is the primary seat of judgment in the courtroom of your mind, your faith. 
Imagine this horizontal pole extending a couple feet to both sides of your head. Hanging down from each end of it are three chains and a balance pan. Now consider a decision before you, an evaluation you need to make. It may involve the relationship with a loved one, a change of jobs, a move, a health challenge. It may be more simple. As you ponder this situation, place all the facts and figures involved in making your judgment in the right balance station. The pros, the cons, and however what you might decide might affect you and those close to you. Carefully analyze, staying in your mind, and think through all the many levels, ramifications, and possibilities involved. And now move your attentions to your feelings of your God get, and put them in the left balance station. All your feelings, your dreams, your heart's desires and inner promptings. These dreams and intuitive impressions may be contrary to your conscious analysis and may add a facet or dimension that you've not considered before. You may have suppressed these feelings or are blind to them. Perhaps as we move into the stillness, you will receive more insight and expansive interpretation or a new and healthier way to view a past experience in the silence. Just as it takes time for a balanced scale to reach its equilibrium, be sure to give yourself enough time to weigh all the many factors involved. Moving back and forth, be among the many considerations until you find your balanced scale coming to center. Then call upon spirit to reveal its higher wisdom and judgment and justice. This inspired guidance flows down the vertical pole of light into your head, through your pituitary gland, down into your heart, and into your gut. From within, you know what insight is right, wise, and just that it's the best possible judgment for you here and now. Having asked, you've received. You've used your wisdom and balanced the scales of justice within yourself. Take a deep breath in and blow it out. Feel yourself in the pew, your back being supported, your feet on the floor, perhaps wiggle your toes and fingers, maybe even your shoulders. And when you're ready, take another breath and open your eyes. Good morning again. I'm Reverend Mary Grace Sorensen. Hi, Mom. 
and I'm honored and delighted to be with you here this morning. Our topic this morning is wisdom, and I pilfered this from the wall across the hall. You probably walk by it all the time and maybe don't even see how important it is. Our wisdom, our God gut, turning within and listening. Wisdom is defined as knowledge or of what is true or right. No, not right or wrong, right or wrong. What, what should we do? And it's coupled with judgment and discernment, being able to look through something and see with a deeper meaning. That's what wisdom is. It's the ability to evaluate and make decisions. Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, tells us in The Revealing Word that wisdom is our intuitive knowing. It's our spiritual intuition. It's that voice of God within us, that still small voice within. You've heard it called that, that still small voice. You've heard it. My husband and was also born and raised in Unity. Actually, his parents knew my mom and dad at Unity Village years before I was even born. But he was a Unity minister for over 50 years, and he was at Unity Church of Livonia for over 30 years. And when he was there, they had a group that he named the Wise Guys and Gals. And they were the senior group. And this name was given to them out of respect for their years of life experience, the Wise Guys and Gals. But that wiseness is not what we're talking about here. Not to discount the wisdom that comes from life experience because it's there, but the wisdom we're talking about in the 12 powers of man that Charles was talking about is an inner wisdom that even young children can demonstrate. I was going to use another illustration, but I saw a story on the news the other night that some of you may have seen. There's a 10-year-old boy named Jaden from Sulphur, Louisiana. And two days ago, his mother started to delivering early his baby brother, Dax. And her cell phone was out of juice. They didn't have a home line. She told him to run next door and call 911. And he did. And he came back. And he took a deep breath. <sighs> Brave little guy. And said, OK, Mom, what can I do? And she knew this baby was breech. And she guided him through it. And he pulled the legs of his baby brother out and delivered, delivered his baby brother. And then, in an intuitive flash of wisdom, he got the nasal aspirator, which his mom just happened to have around preparing for the baby, and cleared his nasal passages. And the doctors tell us that mother and baby would not have made it had it not been for Jaden. And I saw him on the television newscast, and you know what he said? Because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even think. I just did. And that's the wisdom I'm talking about. And with that wisdom comes judgment and discernment. Discerning that inner knowing within what to do. And this knowing transcends the intellectual capacity. It, and it's commonly called what? Intuition. Right? You've heard it called that. We talk about it all of that time. And it's a wonderful name for the action of wisdom. Our fifth principle says we have to put action in place. And this is the action that comes through us, is the wisdom through intuition. And it's attaining direct knowledge without any thought. Right? Just like Jaden. He didn't know. You, know. you don't know rationally how you come up with it, but you just know that you know. That's our intuition or as I like to call it, our God gut. Both Buckminster Fuller and Albert Einstein credit their successes in the geodesic dome and the theory of relativity from flashes of intuition or their wisdom. Let me share with you a few affirmations from Reverend Wendy Craig Purcell. She is the senior minister at Unity Church Center in San Diego and has a daily um, a column that comes out on her email called Take oh, Just for Today. And these were some affirmations she shared in the past couple weeks. The first one's kind of long, so I'll just read it. But the, couple, the second two I'd like you to affirm with me. The first one is I stop second guessing and overthinking. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I pay attention to the wisdom of my soul that clearly knows what is the right next step for me. 
And these two are shorter. The first one is, I will listen to the wisdom of my heart and the calling of my soul. I will listen to the wisdom of my heart and the calling of my soul. Will you say that with me? I will listen to the wisdom of my heart and the calling of my soul. And the other one is really good, too. I quiet the chatter of my mind and listen for my inner wisdom to guide me. I quiet the chatter of my mind and listen for the inner wisdom to guide me. And that's what this is about. It's that inner wisdom guiding us. That's what we're talking about. And these affirmations from Reverend Wendy are about the 12 powers of man power. It's that wisdom that Charles Fillmore tell, talks about. And when Charles Fillmore talks about the different powers, he tells us where they reside in the body, and I bet you know where some of them are. Faith, love, wisdom rests right here in our God gut. I like to call it that. I think that's what you told me to call it when I was little, Mama. Isn't that what we called it, our God gut? You listen to your God gut, and you turn within and know it. But interesting, like right behind the God gut is James. It's James is the disciple here, and the one right behind it is order, and order and wisdom work together to, because they all fall into place. You know, they all just dovetail together. Um, on December 29th of last year, there was a daily word from, that was also on wisdom, and it read, whether I'm aware of it or not, I already have the answers to any uncertainties in my life. That God, my source in all things, if I have questions or I'm seeking guidance, I envision and pray for the highest and best in myself. God guides me in all times and all ways. When I turn within and listen to that still, small voice, I'm listening to the wisdom of God. I'm centered and certain when I accept this inner knowledge. With gratitude, I give thanks for God's wisdom. With faith, I follow that guidance to make productive and love-filled decisions. And the scripture that went with that is from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. For wisdom will come into your heart, moves right up into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Also in the 12 powers of man, Charles Fillmore tells us that King Solomon, Saul o Mon. What does soul mean in Spanish? Son, son of man. Son, man. That sun is that light within ourselves that resides right here. Solomon is our light, our divine intuition just shooting out from us. Kind of like that. <laughs> Although it's, it's here and here, they go together. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 through 10, I'm going to kind of summarize because it's long. God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask what I should give you. And Solomon answered, give me now wisdom and knowledge. And God answered Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked for a long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge Wisdom and knowledge I shall grant you, and all the other things as well. You've heard of King Solomon, right? He followed King David, his dad, and he was the richest and wisest of kings. He's the one who built the temple with all the gold and jewels. He was prosperous beyond belief because he asked for wisdom first. He sought wisdom first. Every day, is Judgment Day, isn't it? And heaven and hell are not places that we go to when we die, we believe in unity. They're states of consciousness that we live in in our here and now world. And they are created by the decisions we make in the courtrooms of our mind. Solomon came after, and, and David came after the judges period in the Bible. And so they had this you know, the, the elders were always making judgments. 
And so they had lower courts, but when something came beyond their understanding and couldn't be solved, it went to the king. And so King Solomon's judgment, he asked for this in a right thereafter. You know, he's a young guy. He's a young guy who comes into this. Right thereafter, he has an opportunity for his wisdom to just go pop and flash in him. Does anybody remember the story of Solomon? The way he used wisdom? You know it? Which one? Is, which one? Where uh, he had to judge the mother of the baby. Yes! Yes! Very right. You get a gold star on your forehead. <laughs> and this improbable cause, this had been heard in the lower courts and couldn't be solved because there was no evidence, right? And so there's these two women who live in a, alone in a house together. And one night, one of them was careless, and she rolled over and suffocated her baby, and it died. They were born three days within one another, these two baby boys, in the same house. What are the odds, right? And she rolls over, kills her baby, wakes up in the night, finds her baby dead, and she goes and switches it with the other woman's live baby and takes the live baby to her own bed. And the mother of the live baby wakes up and finds this dead baby, and she's distraught until she starts examining the baby. And every mother and father knows within minutes who their baby is, right? You know, they know which twins are apart. <laughs> they look exactly alike. These babies probably looked very different. But there's no witnesses, are there? Nobody. It's hearsay. They're both steadfast in their claim. The living child is mine. So it goes to King Solomon, and he hears this, this court case, and he listens. And the, um, the commentaries tell us that he probably knew before he called for the sword who was the mother by her face, her countenance, and the words she was using, and the bearing in her body, because he had that wisdom. But in order for the whole court who was present to know, he called for that sword. And easily, the mother of the dead child could care less what happened to this baby, but as a point in honor, she hit, was going to stay where she was. She was just going to stay in it. She probably knew she was wrong, but how do you back down from it at that point, right? And it's her word against mine. And who wants, I mean, she wanted a live child to raise. But the mother of the baby said, no, no. Don't cut the baby in half. Let her have it. I'd rather her have him and have him live than have him die. And Solomon granted the baby to her, just like he said. And that was using his wisdom. He was listening to his right judgment. Earlier I said every day is judgment day, right? We all made decisions this morning. What? To where? Did you get the green memo, the peach memo? Which memo did you get? Which way to drive to church? Which, what to eat for breakfast? Whether to sleep in this morning and not come to church, which you decided against because you're here, right? I mean, we all face these judgments all the time and make decisions, don't we? Every day, all the time. And we're not even thinking about it. We give judgment judging and judgment's a bad rap, but we have to make them. They're part of who we are and using our brain and our wisdom together through our heart makes them work together. And as soon as we do a little spiritual back practice, back, whoop, backtracking, wow, there's a step down there. Um, we'll find ourselves in right form because if we go back within into prayer and meditation, we can know what to do. We can just center in by calling on that innate wisdom. About a week, no, what well, was last Monday, my, my mother-in-law who lives with me, my mom lives with my sister, and my mother-in-law lives with me. And she and my son went to Canada for three weeks to visit my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and they were flying back through DFW, huge airport, right? And they land in A40, and their next gate on their ticket says A17. And there was supposed to be a wheelchair order, ordered because my mother-in-law, while she walks fine, she, she has a little bit of tinnitus and it kind of makes her wobbly. And so she just, and you know, it's so far to go, it's just easier if she has help. But there's no wheelchair there. So they get off the plane, and my, my son does a little prayer, 
takes a deep breath, says, okay, God, you're in charge. There's no wheelchair here, but I'm sure it's perfect. And he just lets it go. And then in a flash, a sky cab pulls up. He doesn't call it that. He called what did he call it? An in-airport cab service. That's what my son would call it. If you know him, you get it, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, he said that. But the sky cab came and took him to the gate. And they get there, and they let them off. They put their luggage down. They're sitting down. And Jack gets this feeling in his God get that something is not right. And this is the first time he's traveled without either of uh, my, myself or my husband. It's the first time he's traveled just with Grandma. And he's like, this is not right. Something's wrong. And he notices there's no plane. There's no gate agent. There's nobody else sitting here. <laughs> and so he gets up and he goes to the clear, closest gate where there is an agent, like 13 or 12 or something, which is a little walk down, and finds out that there's their plane already left, and I don't know how, but he got another flight, and the agent helped him, and he's going, okay, now how do we get there? Because we're supposed to be boarding in two minutes. <laughs> and they immediately, another sky cab shows up, and he gets my grandmother, his grandmother, not my grandmother, <laughs> and gets them through. And you know how you have to take the sky tram in Dallas to get around? Because they're, they're in A17, it's in D32. Okay, and, and it's leave, they're supposed to be boarding in two minutes. Well, apparently it was delayed. And after going through the sky cab and up and down the elevator and through the thing and all the way over, they get over there, and he just breathes, and there's no seats. This feels right, because there's a jillion people there, and it's already supposed to be boarded. And then over the loudspeaker, Lucille Sorensen, please come to see the gate agent, my mother-in-law, and she goes up there, and they're the first on the plane because they know that she needed the extra time and assistance. And it all just worked out beautifully. And that's listening to your inner wisdom, tuning in and just having it get together. I missed my tip place here. One of the greatest joys in life we can find is when we put ourselves on what I like to call God cruise control. Don't you like that? God cruise control. Where you just trust that inner God gut and allow that wisdom to work through you. And it comes to us through prayer and meditation. Turning within, just like Jack did, just a little prayer, let it go, seek guidance first, and then just release it. And the wisdom will come. It might not come right then. It might come later. It always seems to come to me when my feet are off the floor. Like when I'm laying down in bed, or I'm in the shower, or in a car, or an airplane. Greatest ideas, greatest wisdom. I don't know. You start paying attention to that. That's when my wisdom comes. I don't know about you. But it always it's like this flash of intuition that just comes through, usually not in my prayer and meditation time, which I'm really good about. Not as good as my husband, though. Scott has a strong sense of inner guidance. And um, he's not a, a churchgoer anymore, but he's a, a juggler. Jug and he, on Sunday mornings, he juggles. And it is his God time. Think about the amount of focus. He would love this ceiling. God, he would love this ceiling. Um, <laughs> and he um, got this guidance about, it was in 2008, that he wanted to go to a European juggling festival. And he'd never been to a European Juggling Festival. He'd been to the IJA, the International Juggling Association, which is usually here in the United States or Canada or Mexico. But they're all over our country. They call it international, but it's really United States. And then they had the EJC, the European. And he wanted to go to this. And it was so strong within him, he started acting with faith, like we teach, as if. He put principle number three, his thoughts, words, and action. He started making hotel reservations. He called Rick in Piqua, Ohio, and said, hey, you want to go? I'll be your roommate. He booked the train reservations, the airplane reservations. He even asked for time off work. Now, you don't know this about me, but I am a to-the-penny balancer of my checkbook and budgeter. And very much, my two gifts are zeal and order. You know, I, this, this is what I do. You know, I'm very, very much proud of that. There was not the $2,000 in our budget that year for him to just decide he's going to Europe. But he's acting as if. And he just trusts. 
And a couple, well, it was years before when Jack was little. I guess it was 2000 before Jack was even born. You know, the dot-com phase, everybody's buying all the dot-coms. He had been guided to buy some dot-com names. And he, was, he had won um, awards for his websites before that he had built. And so he had good faith to build these websites. And, you know, they were godsharing.com, things like this. You know, I mean, all spirit, we're very spiritual. My, ver my world is very unity insulated. Anyway, so he, he has all these names with the intent to build something with them. And we had Jack. Anybody have a kid and your life kind of changes and you have a new direction to look at? Nothing happened to these names. They were just sitting there being renewed annually. But he followed that guide, got not knowing why. And then guess what? We got a letter from a company who wanted one of those dot-com names for guess how much money? $2,000. That's listening to your God gut. No matter how silly it sounds to do something. And that convention in Europe was so important for my husband. It transformed the kind of juggler and performer he is. He now holds, I don't mean to brag, but 23 world records in juggling. He's ranked third in the world behind a guy from Japan and Canada. Okay, he is a really good juggler, and I don't just say that, he really is. Go to superjuggler.com, you can see it all right there. But all of that happened after that European juggling festival. So it was so important to get where he is and to know what's going on just by following his guidance. So we seek first, and in humble sincerity, God expresses in our life in profound ways. Jesus didn't say to seek first to heal the body, or the wounded inner child, or to gain riches. What did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God. And that's what we do when we turn within and seek that inner wisdom. That's what we're doing when we're seeking first. Rather than trying to fix it ourselves, right? You know what happens when you try to fix it yourself? What do you mean? Brick wall, brick wall, brick wall, right? When we're trying to do it and we get in our little ego, it doesn't seem to work. It's when we seek God first and turn to that inner wisdom that we only need to ask and that flows through us. And it will in many ways. That ability to evaluate and discern from that higher level of consciousness is what we want. We want to get out of our ego state of mind up here. We need to be up here. We need to value the scale over here. Look at the pros and cons. Use our brain like Buckminster Fuller and Einstein did. But then we have to allow that flash of intuition to come to us. And that comes through that prayer and meditation. You know, judging has been given a bad rap, we, you know, but we're all those judging machines. We all had to, to do that, just like I said er, earlier. We need to have wisdom and good judgment. When I was little, you know, I t um, was talking to, I guess, was it you who told me this? Somebody told me this this morning about this little orange sheet. Was it Cheryl? It was Cheryl, I guess. You told me. Um, y'all, y'all, Sandra's been telling you about lip ju lip, lips flows, W-U-Z-E. Well, I learned it a little bit different, right, Mama? It's lip juice flows. We use juice, judgment, and, and J-U-Z-E is juice. Lip juice, like saliva flows, that's easier for me to get. I'm going like, that dog, flapping on the floor. That's the way I think of the 12 hours. <laughs> but, um, so you've got love, imagination, power. Where's power? Power's in the throat. Strength, faith. Life is in the root chakra, order which is right behind the wisdom, will, um, understanding, and, and ju well, judgment right here, understanding on the other side, um, zeal, and then elimination. Right? So they all go together. Lib, Jews, flows. That's the way I learned it. And it's easier for me to remember because I can see a salivating puppy dog. <laughs> I have three dogs, that's why. Um, what was I going to say? I already said that. So Jesus said to seek first the kingdom of God, to know God, and the operation of spirit works through us. It just comes forth. We can't stop it. And it's just like instead of those brick walls, when we start listening to our inner wisdom, 
our lives just fall into place, don't they? I'm sure you've all had experiences like that. So we simply allow wisdom to speak through us when we turn within and seek God first. So let us pray. Let my words be your words. God, I acknowledge your presence and I ask and seek wisdom first in my life. As I take inventory of my world, I have a clear understanding, a perception of right where I am and where I am going. I tap into my inner wisdom and able to express with wisdom and courage to follow the guidance I receive that unfolds for me moment by moment. In the name and after the nature of the Christ presence, we pray. Amen. And our question for this morning, I understand you do dialogue. Do we, do, we don't do that here? We only, okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. So thank you very much, and it's my pleasure to be here.